Put the water, if you have not already taken yours. Getting the bands connected. Let's see who's on. Awesome. All right. Looks like we have people who have done this for the most part before. If anyone has questions and whatnot, feel free to unmute yourself and ask or just toss it into the chat. Uh, all right. So we're going to actually start on our hands and knees today. So go ahead and make your way onto your mat or your floor space. And we will get started. So coming on down, getting your cycle going if you have not already done so. Uh, we're going to take a couple rounds of what in yoga is called cat cow to start to open up our spine and get our arms a little bit of a wake up here. So as you inhale, start to lift your chest, lift your tailbone, think arch your back. And as you exhale, pull the navel and round it out. As you inhale, lift chest and tailbone. And as you exhale, round out the spine. And let's go ahead and just take a couple more rounds of this on your own. Getting as deep into the position as you can. Nice. Again, say two more rounds. And last one. There we go. Next up, we're going to keep working into the spine. We're going to take the left hand to the back of our head. We start to wrap elbow to elbow underneath the body and then lift the elbow up. The left one as high as you can getting into the spine. So you start to wrap elbow to elbow underneath the body and then lift it up, rotating open. We're gonna take 30 seconds on this side and then we're gonna do the other side. So go ahead and starting to rotate through the spine, creating some movement here. Nice. Getting a little core engagement to lift up a little bit higher. And this specific twist is for our thoracic spine, so our mid upper back, um, which can sometimes become immobile because we just don't twist and move it as much as our lower back, which helps a lot with our hips. Good, last 10 seconds. Good. Take two more. And then go ahead and release the left hand down to the floor. Let's take the right hand to the back of the head. And 30 seconds, we're going to work into the other side. So bringing it down, opening up, and down, and opening up. And if you were to think of this exercise as strengthening anything, it would be your core. Engaging the core to help lift that top elbow up even higher. And feeling the bands working, arms are working. Last 10 seconds, take two more. And go ahead and come back to center. Rest the right hand down to the floor. Now we have some work that we're gonna do for shoulder mobility before we get into our forearm strength work. So what I want to see happen is we're working the left arm only to start. Is I want you to extend your left arm straight in front of you, ideally bringing it in line with your ear. And then start to make a big stroke, leading with the pinky finger all the way up and back down to the floor. So only the left arm, we reach forward, Make as big a circle as you can without moving the rest of the body. So we're going to take 30 seconds on this side, then we're going to do 30 seconds on the other. And then we're going to get into some of our more strength-based work. Big circle, open it up. And I want you to take these really slowly. Each time you do it, making an even bigger circle without letting the rest of the body move. And because we're working into mobility here, we're also building strength in the muscles surrounding our shoulder while we open that up. We're also building strength in our core. Awesome. Amazing, good, last one. And let's switch into the right side. And you might notice what I call sticky shoulder, meaning you have points that are hard to work through. That's why we do it. Let's go ahead and starting on the right side, reach that arm straight forward, bring it in line with the ear. And then big circle up and around. And you might also notice that one side is harder than the other. That's really normal too. We have a tendency to use different parts of the body in different ways. For example, you could be right or left-handed. Ooh. And these sometimes can feel pretty intense for me if I do them and I create enough resistance in my body. And that's what I want you to do. So doing your best to keep your shoulders 
squared off to the floor, looking down the whole time. The last one. And rest. Good job. Start to make your way up either onto your knees or your, you can come up to stand. We're gonna do wrist circles. So we're not only building forearm strength, but we're also isolating the wrist joint. So the only thing we want to be moving is the hand in that joint. So it's a little two for one. So I'm gonna pull my elbows in. Let me get my timer set up. Beautiful. Pull your elbows in and then start to circle the wrists around. And you'll notice here that your forearms really want to kind of shake and move. I want you to keep the tops of your arms, the inner part of your forearms, facing up the whole time. And the more that we go for precision and we really isolate the wrist joint, the more the forearms have to work building muscle to stay stable and not shift and move. Yeah. Good. It's gonna be hard. Mm -hmm. We have two 30 second sets. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Release it. We're gonna do that again. There is absolutely no benefit to adding speed here, except you risk moving the arms around more, which actually won't strengthen the muscle. It'll just kind of flop your arm around. So for this set, see if you can move even slower and make bigger circles. 30 seconds, let's move through it. And maybe for these ones, flip the fist to face down and don't let the top edge of your arm move. And if you do these right and really keep the forearms still, you might even get like a sh little shake as you make these circles and that's exactly what we want. Oh, my forearms are starting to tip. They want to so badly, last 10. Yes, we have five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. Good job. Quick check. Hold up the base of your hand. Give it a press. See if it turns from white back to normal couple in about three seconds, making sure our bands are on not too tight, not too loose. We can also do the good old one finger check to see if we have too much space between our bands. So now that we've started to work the forearm, let's go into a forearm plank. And we're going to work our triceps in this forearm plank. And we only have two more exercises for our upper body here. So let's give it our best. So as I come into my forearm plank, I'm going to extend my left arm back behind me. And I'm going to pull four, three, two, one. I set it down. I reach my right arm back. Four, three, two, one. So same thing we do with that tricep extension. We're just adding that in plank position to create a little bit more resistance and a lot more difficulty. If being in forearm plank and doing this does not work, you can always do tricep extension. So let's give it a shot. We're gonna do two 45 second sets. So start to make your way into forearm plank. Extend the left arm back, pulse it up. Four, three, two, and one. Set it down, right arm, pulse it back. Four, three, two, and one. You've got it, keep going. Keep that arm really straight as you reach back, and you'll know if you're getting into the tricep muscle, the back of the arm. Nice. Good. What a good crew we have on here today. Good to see everybody. Amazing. Last 10. Good. We have six, five, four, three, two, and rest. That looks great. I didn't see a lot of shifting and movement. Everyone's bodies looked really stable. So we were isolating the muscles of the shoulders as well as the triceps. So we have one more set. Go ahead and make your way down into your forearm plank. Same thing, speed does not matter. In fact, see if you can go even slower, getting that arm higher on the lift. Ready, go. Nice. Actively reaching your fingertips away from your shoulder the whole time you're extending back behind you. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Good. Requires balance, requires focus, requires tricep. Everybody looks great. Last 15 seconds. <laughs> Can tell some of our swimmers are a little tired. We have eight, seven, six, 
five, good game, four, three, two, and rest. Awesome. Come on up. Quick stretch. Take your right hand, place it between your shoulder blades. Take your left hand to that elbow and gently guide it down, releasing the tricep. Now, no slouching and rounding here. Keep pressing the back of your head into the arms, help open up. And if you can, you can tuck that elbow back behind you even more. I call that the chicken wing. Nice, release it, other side, left hand in between the blades, using the right hand to encourage it down. And go ahead and release it. Give the shoulders a roll. And our last exercise for our upper body, I call push-up wave. Kind of made it up this morning. So it's three parts. So I start with my hips up and back. I shift my weight forward into plank. I drop down into a push-up and I roll my hips up and back. So it's one, two, three, press it back, okay? So we're gonna do a whole minute of those. So move slowly, take your time. Your arms are supporting your body the whole time. So no matter what you're doing, you're building arm strength here. And you're also getting some flexibility in the back of the hamstrings as we do this. So one minute, we'll meet in downward facing dog, hips up and back. And I'm gonna start my time now and I'll do the first couple with you. So start to roll forward into plank. Totally okay to drop the knees here if you need to, come into a push up and then bring the hips up and back, dropping the heels towards the floor. Roll into it, push up, hips up and back, heels towards the floor. And keep going, that's our move. Awesome. So starting to warm up the lower body, the legs a little bit too. And anytime we're in a position where our arms are up and over our head, we're opening up our shoulders as well. So we're getting some mobility as well as we work through from push up back to having our hips up and back. These look great, gang. Nice, we're waving. Last 15 seconds. Awesome, Wayne. Good, Kayleen. Let's see if we can do one more for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Everybody drop your knees and walk your arms forward. Keeping your hips stacked over your knees, drop your chest down towards the floor, get a shoulder stretch in. And I want my arms extended so far away from my body that my elbows are off the floor. And I can create a little deeper sensation of the stretch if I push the floor away from me and drop my chest down. So anytime we can create counteraction in the stretch, we open up the body even more. Last few breaths here. Good. And when you're ready to start to walk the arms back towards the body, we're going to come out of it by pressing our hips up and back. Walk your hands back to meet your feet and then roll on up to stand. We have our cardio boost. Yes, we're still doing some cardio today. Our three moves are pendulum swing, I swing, swing, kick, swing, swing, kick. Side to side, that's one. Number two, crisscross jacks. And last up, we have inchworm. So we're prepared for this. We crawl down, walk it out, crawl back, give me a jump. Okay? First 30 seconds, pendulum swings, ready, set, and let's go. Swing, swing, up, swing, swing, up. Good. Woo, try and get those legs all the way up towards your arms. And we're building a little bit of strength here because we have to keep our arms out to the sides the whole time. If you want to pick up the pace, go for it. Awesome. Good. Last six, five, four, three, two, and one. Right into crisscross jacks. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. Last 10. Then we're coming down for inchworms. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Watch the back of your workspace. 30 seconds. We walk out, 
we walk back and we jump. I walk out, I walk back and I jump. Also getting some hamstring flexibility here. As you walk it back, see if you can keep your legs as straight as possible, as long as possible. Nice. Sometimes I have to tuck my device into my pants, otherwise the clip comes undone on me. Good, last six, five, one more, four, three, two, and one. Good job, everybody. Go ahead and take the armbands off and let's switch it out to leg bands and we'll have our question of the day as well as a good amount of water. So sip the water and switching the bands. And our question of the day is, my gosh, we've had so many right now. Yesterday, the question of the day is, where are you born? What else did we talk about this week? So many, so many things. Okay, today the question of the day is, hmm, if you won a million dollars, stipulation free, you just, you won a million dollars, someone gave it to you, there happened to be no tax, what would you do with it? Let me hear your answers. <laughs> No one? I would go to med school without worrying about debt. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I really love that. You go to med school? Heck yeah, girl. You go to med school and then some. You'd have a good amount of cash left over. Clinton says, buy V-Bucks. What are V-Bucks? I'm so not cool. Explain, explain, Clinton. What are they? Jim says, house on the beach. Steve says, give 250000 each of my four kids and tell them that they have to start a company with that money. That's, I think, the best answer. <laughs> anything all week. Pay off the house, send all three kids to school, and then there won't yep. be anything left and we'll be done. Pay off the house and send all three kids to school. That's, that's a pretty good investment. I think that's great. Quinn says, that's the currency in Fortnite. Oh, yeah, Steve, I'm not cool enough to know that. <laughs> Chris says, get Steve a ton of coconut trees. That's a lot of coconut trees. He says, coconut juice is a hot retail item. These are good. These are really good. House on the beach, Jim. I think I, think I would take that money and almost, almost be able to buy a house in Santa Monica, California, where I live. But not quite. <laughs> All right. Getting hooked up to our bands. I like these answers. A lot of family related stuff. Got one more. Bonnie says, yeah, a studio apartment in Santa Monica. Yes, that's what I could buy with a million dollars. That would cost me a studio. Like if I got a condo, that would be like 800,000 roughly. Pretty aggressive. Bonnie says, beach house and back to school. Hmm. So we've got some family stuff, some housing and some education going on for a lot of us. I like that. Okay, so we've got our leg bands on, and I want us to start, we're gonna do two hip opening exercises before we dive into the rest of our stuff. So the first one is just standing leg circles, starting with the right leg. So keeping the body as stable as possible, open everything up. Really, Quentin? You buy Fortnite currency? Really? <laughs> you wouldn't even buy Steve some coconut trees like Chris? <laughs> Two more. Good, and other side, waking up the hips. Also getting some core, some balance in there. Good. And after this, we're gonna come down to sit. Counterintuitive for a workout, I realize, but it's gonna be good. Last one. All right, so I'm gonna angle this down a bit so we can all see. There we go. Okay, so make your way down to sit. And I want two 90 degree angles. So I'd like your right shin to be parallel with your shoulders and your left shin to be parallel with the side wall. Okay. Now, let's start. We have four things we're gonna do with this right leg. The first thing, and feel free to take a kickstand here if you need it. I want you to get that back foot up and off the floor, set it down, up, 
down. We have eight, seven, good, keep growing taller, six, five, hard, four, three, two, and one. Now, next one, that was move number one. Number two, we get the whole leg off the ground and we pulse it. Try and take your hands up while you do this. Eight, seven, six, five. Do your best. You can always do the move before the one we're currently doing if you need something easier. Two, one. That was move number two. Move number three, I pick that left leg up. Pull the knee back and kick it out. In, out, in. We have six. Keep growing taller. Five. Four. Yes. Three. Two. Last one. Rest. One more move. Okay. If you can't do these, it's especially important why we try to do some of these. It's hard. Okay. Left leg up. Kick it straight. Little pulses with that foot. Dig into that hip. Eight. Seven. Six five, four, three, two, and one. Rest. Now, let's work it to the right leg. Pick it up. Kick it out. Pull it in. Out. In. We have four. Yes, we got it. Three, two. Kick it straight and up. Six, five, four. Use your core. Three, two, and one. Awesome. Switch sides. So we call this the 90-90 because I have two 90 degree angles in my knees. This time my left shin is parallel with my shoulders and my right shin is out to the side. Now notice if your knee is pitched forward like me, it's slightly forward. I want to pull it back enough that it's in line with my shoulder. All right. Totally cool to do these with one hand down. That's your kick stand. So first movement, get that back foot up, down, up, down, maybe no hands. Six. Five, I have way more mobility on the other side. Three, two, and one. Whole leg up. Eight, seven, six, five. See if you can keep it from touching the floor. Last two, one. Second move, pick that leg up, kick it out. In, out, in. Yes, six, grow taller. Five, ooh, four three, two, last one, and rest. And if I had one recommendation of strength-based exercises you can do for your hips to prevent injury, it would be this 90-90 work. It's really funky, but it is so, so good for our hips. All right, last exercise. Get that leg out, little pulses up and up with the outer edge of your foot. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome. Work into the front leg. Pick it up. Ooh, I'm cramping. If you're cramping, that just means your body's not used to doing this movement. And it might be tired. It's new. Kick that leg out. In, out, in. We have four, three, two. Kick it out. Little kicks up and up. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Rest. Good job. Hop on up, a little different than what we normally do. Give the hips a circle, release them. And we have another circle around the other way, wave-based exercise. So we're linking different movements together to create this kind of arc of movement. So because we usually wanna work on strengthening our smaller muscles first, let's take a look at our calves. So this is a multi-part move, just work with me here. I lift my heels up. As I drop my butt towards my heels, I reach my arms up. I rise up to stand. I drop my heels down, okay? So we're gonna do one minute and I'll walk us through it together to get started. Heels come up, butt comes down, arms reach. We rise up to stand. We drop our heels down and keep going, heels up. But down, get those arms active. Rise to stand, drop your heels, that's it. And each time you do it, see if you can get your butt a little bit lower and your arms a little bit straighter. Use your balance. Nice.
Good. Last 20 seconds. Keep going. Nice job. Good. And something I'm noticing is that some of our legs are kind of wanting to open up like this. Try and keep the knees parallel as you drop into it. That's a little bit easier. It gives us a wider base, but we want to use control to keep our legs straight. Last six, five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. All right, let's get our heart rate up a little bit, and then we'll go into our next exercise. So pendulum swings, 30 seconds on your mark. Get set. Here we go. Swing, swing, kick. Swing, swing, kick. Get those legs all the way up. Yeah. Fun fact, I don't know if I ever shared this with you guys, but I'm actually not a naturally flexible person. My body tends to run extremely tight. This is just a lot of stretching and mobility work. So if at any point you ever feel discouraged because you might not be as flexible as you want to be, let me be the case example that you can earn it. Good, last three. Two and one. Crisscross jacks. Here we go. And flexibility is actually part hereditary. So you can blame your parents if you have tight hamstrings. At least I do. All right, half done. Last 10. We have seven, six, five. Four, three, two, and one. Inchworms, back of your workspace. We walk it out, we walk it up, and hop. Walk it out, walk it up, and hop. Try and keep your legs straight as you walk your hands back towards your feet. After this, we'll take a sip of water. Nice. Ooh, I like it. Get those arms up on the jumps. Last 10. Yay! We have six, five. Go, Sophie and Sydney. Four, three, two, and one. Good job. All right, next up, a familiar exercise the Cossack squat. I step my feet wide. Grab your sip of water. Take it, take it now. We'll have a moment before we do this. I step my feet wide. Now, think low, think slow. I bend into my left knee, I get as low as I possibly can. Now what's gonna wanna happen is this heel's gonna wanna pop up if you have tight calves. Your calf's gonna say, we can help. No, heel stays down, get as low as you can, press into the heel, come back up through center. Bend into the right leg, get as low as you can, press into the heel, come back up through center. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm not flopping out just to get low. Chest stays up, hips are building strength. And if this is as low as you can go, awesome. As long as your heels are down and you're not rounding your spine, I'm happy. Two 45-second sets. Ready, set, here we go. Side to side. And if you want to make it faster, you can, but I'd rather you get your butt even lower. Good. Nice job, Instagram. Yes, challenge yourself. Hit that point that you may or may not have thought it's possible before. Worst case scenario, you drop your hands down, you help yourself back up. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm keeping my weight in my heels the whole time. Oh my goodness, Wayne, that's amazing. Nice, you guys, these look fantastic. Bonnie looks good. Diane looks great. Lily, solo. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Step it up. Bend into the alternate knee, little baby bends, rock it side to side. These look great. And let's think for a second, before we start our second set, why are we doing these? Why are we doing these? Like, if we're gonna exercise, let's at least think about the point. So I like to do these because they open your hips enough so that if you have to bend down and grab something, you can use your legs and not use your back. So essentially, we want to get enough mobility in our bodies so that no matter how low an item is, we can bend down and use our legs to get it. So that's one reason why I'm so adamant about 80 different variations of squats that we do, including these ones. All right, second step. Ready? Let's go through it. Bend into one leg. Drop your butt down. Maybe even imagine you're picking something up and bend the other leg. Set it back down. You've got the idea. 
And that's why we do it. All fitness, in my opinion, should be functional. Why are we doing what we're doing? And if we can't answer that, we should think about it. Or maybe rethink what we're doing. Amazing. Half done. Good. Last 10. See if you can get two more good ones in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good job. Kick those legs out. All right. Let's get the heart rate up. Pendulum swings, crisscross jacks, inchworms. We only have two more heart rate boosts, so let's make them good. 30 seconds. On your mark. Get set. Here we go. Swing, swing, kick. Swing, swing, kick. Also, you guys keep going. I'm going to demonstrate something. If you have really tight hamstrings and you bend over like this, your hamstrings are going to tug and they're going to tug your lower back. So that's also a cause of lower back pain. So all the different reasons we should open up our hips. Last six, five, four, three, two, and one. Crisscross jacks. Take a wide. Woo. There we go. And if there's ever a movement that we're doing and you're like, why? Why on earth are we doing this? Ask me. That's why I'm here. Last 10. We have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Walk the back of your workspace. Inchworms. As you jump up at the top, I want to see arms up and overhead. Ready, set, go. Walk it out. Walk it in. Jump. Arms come up. Grab water after this. Woo! I saw that jump. Yeah, there we go. Go, Quentin, go. Good, last 10. See if you can do two more. Get that heart rate going. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. All right. 180 lunge drops. So when we're doing lunges, we're strengthening mostly the hamstrings as well as the glutes, and we got a little bit of quads too. So to challenge our ankle mobility and our body mobility, I drop my back knee down as low as you can, rise up, rotate, other side. And as you rotate, try and stay as low to the floor as you can. Okay, that's it. I call them 180 lunge drops. Two 45 second sets. On your mark, get set, and here we go. So I come over to one side, get my knee down, stay as low as possible, other leg. Work through it, side to side. Yeah, there we go. Good, and you can do whatever you want with your hands. If wings help balance and stability, take wings. If you want more of a challenge, take them behind your head. You can take them to your hips, you can do whatever. Stay low, keep it slow. Yes. Nice, Chris. And I realize it's a little hard on carpet, but everyone looks good. Kayleen on fire. Last 10. Good, Gabe. We have seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Nice. Take it out a bit. I love those. Everyone was low. And everyone was like sticking with it. They were actually getting their back knee down. We weren't just kind of doing that, which is sweet in its own right, but not the goal for today. All right, second set. Ready? Let's go. Over to one side. Get that knee down. Stay low. Over to the other. And as you go side to side, I want you to fully square your hips off to the side wall and then come back into it. So none of this like half stuff. Okay? Awesome. And this is mobility. How well do our legs rotate in our hip sockets when we're adding weight, which is our own body? Yes. 
Nice. I see this pace and I love it. Everyone keep doing exactly what you're doing. Last 10. See if you can do, I don't know, three or four more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. Our last heart rate boost of the day. Then we're going to come into what I call mobility burpees. We got some kicks. And then we're gonna stretch it out and do some core, okay? So pendulum swing, 30 seconds, ready, set. Nope, that's 45, let's go. Practice getting your leg up as high as you can because we're gonna use this in one of our exercises. So when I'm swinging my leg out to the side like so, is this mobility? or flexibility, if you had to pick one of the two. We'll answer after this exercise. Good, last 10. We have six, five, four, three, two, and one. Cross jacks. Nice. Whew, get it going. Get those arms moving. Awesome, half done. Last one of the day, last one of the week. Last 10. Then we're coming down for inch one. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Walk back of your workspace. Ready, walk it out. Walk it in. Give me that jump. Big old reach at the top. So we're also opening up our shoulders. Walk it out. Walk it in. Woo. We'll get some water after this. And we'll answer the mobility versus flexibility question. Perfect, keep it up, keep it up. Last 10, let me see two more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You just won a million dollars, good job. All right, does anyone wanna take a guess? So I'll pause for a second. If I'm holding my leg out like this, is that more mobility or flexibility? I mean, it's a 50-50 shot, you'll get it right. Any guesses? No. <laughs> I'm gonna say mobility. Gonna say mobility? Why? There's, you can't go wrong here. I know I'm testing you guys. <laughs> That's in order to move through full range, you have to have both the strength and the range, and the range would be limited by your flexibility, but your strength will also limit your range. So, Bonnie wins a million dollars of the day, <laughs> or maybe two, because what she kind of clarified there is the, the term range of motion, which is exactly what applies to mobility. It's our ability to control our joints, right? And so when I'm able to hold my leg out to the side like this, I have good range of motion and I'm able to control my leg in my hip socket. So like if I'm standing like this and I'm stretching, that's flexibility. But anything that requires control of a specific body part, for the most part, is mobility. So that was right. Yeah. And we had a couple answers in the chat I want to address. Steve said because balance is involved. Balance being we had to control it. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So anytime we have flexibility, that's when a muscle lengthens. So there is some flexibility required here, right? I have to get my leg out to the side. But the control part, that range of motion, mobility. Good answer. All right. Next up. We have roundhouse kicks. So we're just gonna get silly. It's gonna look ridiculous. You might wanna clear your home space of anything you have in your immediate future. We're gonna start with the right leg and I want you to brace yourself on your left leg because we're gonna kick our right leg up and around. We go up and around. Now, be careful. Don't toss anything, don't pull anything. Do it within reason. But we're gonna try 30 seconds per side working the control of our leg and our hip socket. So you don't have to just fling your leg. You can take these really slow and see how big you can get that kick. That's the control, okay? Right leg, first 30 seconds, let's give it a shot. And the less I can move the rest of my body, the better. So maybe you try a couple just fully swinging and maybe you try a couple without moving any of the rest of your body. And that makes it really hard. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm actively working my range of motion and I'm making it bigger each time by controlling my leg and my hip socket. Last five, four, come on, three, two, and one. Let's work into the other leg. So find balance on the right leg to start. That's our base. And time is going. You can do one of these or you can do 15, I don't care. And my left leg has a lot more range than my right leg. So this is hard. Maybe you take a couple big swings. <laughs> and maybe you take a couple just building that strength to move through it. Mm -hmm. Last 10. Ooh. <laughs> we have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Kick it out. Last up of our strength exercises, we have mobility burpees. So I start in plank position for these. I step my right foot outside my right hand, step my left foot outside my left hand. I drop into a squat. I rise up, reach. I come back down into a squat, none of this, butts down, and I step back. If you wanna make these more challenging, hop your feet outside your hands. Squat one, rise. Squat two, jump back. I gotta see the two squats. That's how we go strong on our hips so we don't compromise our back, okay? So we have one minute. Go ahead and make your way into plank position. On your marks, get set. Here we go, I step or jump up. Squat, reach, squat, hop back. Yeah. And the work here is also how high can you jump your feet up towards your hands? That's also mobility. Controlling your legs, squeezing your hips, your joints to get the legs up. Amazing, half done. These are great. Mm -hmm. Don't forget those two squats. Sometimes we squat one, we rise up, and then we kind of just squat down. Get your butt down and then come back into it. Wonderful. Good, last 10. Let me see two more. Eight, seven, awesome job. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Everyone coming up to stand. Rock it side to side, release those hips. All right. We have core work that we're gonna do in plank position today that also involves mobility. Then we're gonna come up for some balance and then we're gonna stretch it out. So some would say today's easier, some would say today's harder, it just depends on your body. Um, and also depends how much you're challenging yourself. So really isolating the movement. So for our core today, I'm gonna come into plank position. I pull my left knee to my left elbow, tap it, tap right elbow, tap left elbow, tap right elbow. 30 seconds per side. We got like another little TikTok pendulum swing going. If you can't get your knee to your elbow, get your knee towards your elbow, okay? First step, make your way into plank in three, two, and one. Get that knee up, tap, 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 side to side. I love it, these are good. Nice, see if you can use your core, the point of this exercise, to get that knee up even higher. Mm -hmm. Last 10, then we're gonna drop our knees for a quick pause. We have six, five, four, three, two, and one. Drop it down, awesome job. Quick stretch before we do the other side. Find your left leg, extend it out to the left in line with your hips. The inner edge of my foot is pressed into the floor, the outer edge is up, and I press my butt back towards my heels. Now, flexibility or mobility? I think we know the answer. This one's flexibility, it's just a stretch. And ideally you're on the top of your right foot, your toes aren't touched, so you're also getting an ankle stretch as well. All right, start to shift that weight forward, take the left knee back into center, walk up into plank, second set, right knee, right elbow, left elbow, right elbow, left elbow, tick tock side to side, we're rolling.
And as you're doing this, giving yourself something to think about, think about if there's any particular body part that you would like to stretch, um, because I'm open to, for suggestions for this last portion. If there's anything you're feeling particularly tight in, you can toss in the chat or unmute yourself. We have five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome job, everyone. Uh, any stretch requests, we'll take one minute, grab some water, think about the if there's anything you'd like to focus on. And then we'll spend our last five or six minutes stretching. Chris says lower back. Awesome. Totally, we can do that. John says glutes. Okay. That's an interesting one and a hard one to stretch, but definitely possible. And we can do that. Hips, lower back, glutes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. We can do all that. All right. Deltoids. Okay. All right. So we're going to. Start with some lower body stuff because we're having more requests for that. And then we'll work our way up if we have time. So first things first, let's make our way down onto hands and knees because we didn't take that stretch for the right leg. Go ahead and extend your right leg out to the side, pull your butt back. Sorry, I skipped that one. And what I really like about stretching the hips is one, it's the biggest muscle in the body. But two, when we stretch our hips, that actually helps to release the glutes on just by doing that. So it's really nice way when you release your hips, you release a lot of tension in different places in the body. Start to shift the weight forward. Make your way onto hands and knees. And then step your right foot outside your right hand. So similar to what we just did in that exercise. Now the knee is going to want to flop open to the side. I'll demonstrate. Try and keep pulling your right knee towards your right shoulder. And then start to drop down as low as you can onto your form. And if you need to remove your device or set it down, move it over to the side, do it. Give yourself space. We're going to hold here for 30 seconds. In order for a stretch to be effective, we have to hold it for 15. And we're twice as cool, so we're going to hold it twice as long. Good. Now, be thinking about the upper body as a tool to help us get deeper into the stretch. Relax the upper body completely. Relax your jaw, your shoulders, and just let the upper body hang, be heavy, helping us out here. Good. Last five seconds. And start to make your way onto your palm. And then let's switch sides. This time, step your right foot back. Step your left foot outside your left hand. Keep pulling that knee in towards your shoulder and then drop down on or towards your form. It doesn't matter which one. And as you're hanging out here, think about dropping your gaze down to the floor or maybe even looking back at your right leg. So really letting the neck be long. We're doing some hips. Last 10 seconds. See if you can slow your breathing down. And when you're ready, start to make your way onto your palm and step that knee back. Now, we had an interesting hodgepodge of stretch requests, so it's kind of hard to go in like a sensical order, but we're going to get into lower back now. So everyone come down to sit and take a wide-legged seat. And there's a muscle in our lower back called the QL, the quadricemborum, that can sometimes tighten up. They almost feel like two panels on the lower side of your back. So we're gonna give those a stretch. So take your hands up, rotate over to the right, squaring your shoulders off towards the right wall, and then plant your hands down. And I wanna keep creating length between my left shoulder and my left hip. So the more I can twist and then walk, getting length all throughout this. And you can kind of create traction by pressing the base of the right hand away from you to help twist even deeper. Nice, and let yourself relax into it as much as you can. Letting the shoulders drop towards the floor on the right side. Last 10 seconds. And we wanna be careful when we're coming out of this one because it's a really deep stretch. So to start to make your way out of it, I want you to look back over your right shoulder and start to roll up to sit with your shoulders squared off to the right. 
Good. Now rotate back through center, hands come up. Drop them both over to the left, squaring the shoulders off. And keep walking your right fingertips forward, pulling your left hand back. Nice. And let yourself hang a little deeper. And last breath or two. Keep pulling the left shoulder back, right shoulder forward. And looking over the left shoulder, start to roll up to sit. Roll back through center. Uh, we're gonna come onto our backs for our last two stretches. So go ahead and make your way down onto your back. And I want you to cross your right thigh over your left thigh and draw both knees into the chest. This re releases a muscle in the glutes called the piriformis. Uh, and when the piriformis tugs, the entire glute can feel really tight. The piriformis is a little baby muscle located near the top of the glute. So keep pulling the knees in, give yourself a rock side to side. Good. And then release the legs, keep them crossed and guide them both over to the left. This will help get into the lower back as well if we're taking a twist, releasing all the muscles surrounding the spine. Nice. And bring the legs back to center, unhook them, this time left thigh over top right, pull the knees into the chest, rock side to side. and guide both knees over to the right, keeping the shoulders down. Last leg breath. Pull the knees back through center, unhook them, draw them into the chest, start to rock and roll up and down, come up to sit, give the shoulders a roll. Reach your arms up, clasp the base of the palms, push it up towards the ceiling. Good. And then release the hands, give yourself a round of applause. Awesome job, everyone. Um, go ahead and hang tight for one moment. Um, I will explore the deltoid stretch. Um, I just want to look at that one a little bit closer. So good job, everybody. Have a great weekend. And I will see you all. Um, getting my phone, turning off Instagram. I will see you all on Monday. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Laurel. What? Go you Peter. too. Go I actually want to look up best deltoid stretch. I don't know that one. Hang tight. Deltoid B. Um, uh, um, That's the best one? This For deltoid? Up. Yeah. Let me see. For all the dogs. Okay, so that's essentially, okay. I know, like, we kind of just want to get into the shoulders. It's hard because to stretch like that specific muscle, you kind of want to lengthen. Actually, you know what would be a good one? Is when we clasp our hands behind our back and then we stretch and pull. So that way, because that one can be hard because there's three parts of the deltoid and we want to be able to kind of get all of them. Um, but to do that one, draw them back, lengthen out, and right. you can get that length all throughout there as well as Wait, getting a bicep cross stretch. Cross body too? Cross, cross body is awesome. Yeah. They're, they're Anything where you're getting length is, is a good thing. Yeah. Sometimes I have to give myself a refresher. I'm like, okay. That's okay. What, what do I want to do? <laughs> yeah. These are all good. Also, I really also just, like um, this one. And this is the last thing I'll demonstrate. You can do it on a wall or you can yeah. do it lying down. You 
extend your arm out to the side and you roll yourself onto that arm and it opens up the arm, the shoulder really nicely. All right, I'll let everyone go. <laughs> Thanks, have a good, have a good weekend. weekend.